Hey guys, welcome to your next tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to enhance, enhance our init systems function just a little bit more. Uh, first thing I want to do is show you uh, this right here. Our SDLGL set attribute function is actually in the wrong place. You're supposed to call this function right before you create your window. Uh, because it sets the state for that window before it's created. Uh, we didn't do this before, but it probably, uh, uh, SDLGL probably had uh, one already set for double buffer, which turns double buffering on. It was probably already set by default, so I don't think this is going to really make much of a difference for you. But we want that there, that's good. Uh, now, uh, what I want to talk about is vertical synchronization. And now what vertical synchronization is, is basically when vertical sync or vsync is enabled, it's going to cause... Uh, your OpenGL drawing code uh, to try to synchronize uh, the, the frame rate with the vertical refresh rate of your, uh, of your monitor. So say you have a 60 hertz monitor, that means it can only display 60 frames per second. Even if you're running 1,000 frames per second, it's only going to display 60 frames. So if you have vSync enabled, what it's going to do is anytime you draw a frame, OpenGL is going to wait for the exact moment that the monitor refreshes, and then it's going to display that frame. And this is going to prevent what's known as screen tearing. Uh, you probably won't notice it in your simple 2D games, uh, but in some 3D games, you may have noticed screen tearing. Uh, you can look it up online. If I ever uh, see it in any of our games, I'll point it out for sure. Uh, and it also, of course, it... It, uh, it limits your FPS, kind of like our FPS limiter does, so it can be useful. However, there is something about it that may turn you guys off to it is if you are running at like 45 frames per second, with vSync enabled, it's going to drop your frame rate down to 30 uh, because you can't uh, evenly display 45 fr frames per second on a 60 hertz monitor. So what it's going to do is it's going to drop down to 30 frames per second and display one frame every uh, two cycles through your uh, game loop, basically. So to enable vSync, uh, right now I believe for me it's disabled by default. It may have actually been enabled by default for some of you, and you probably noticed that in the previous tutorial if your frames per second uh, limiter was always at 60 or something. Uh, so let's go ahead and say SDL GL set swap interval. So this will set vSync. If it's a 1, vSync is on. If it's a 0, vSync is off. So I'm going to set it to 1. Sorry, I keep getting a bunch of Skype messages. I'm going to set it to 1, and this will turn on vSync. Uh, set vSync. All right, so let's go ahead and build it and see what happens. We'll look at our frame rate. So my frame rate is at 60, it's, or it's, uh, the max frame rate is 60. However, I'm getting uh, around 30. It's pretty volatile, and the reason it's being so volatile is because I have OBS running. I've tried this without OBS running, and it, it gets 60 perfectly. Uh, but this kind of illustrates to you what vSync is going to do. Uh, so I'm going to turn vSync off now. Let's go back down to this and set it to zero. And with vSync off, I am getting 40 frames per second. Uh, so now you can understand why I was getting 30. Uh, with OBS, my frame rate gets capped to 40 just because of the way OBS records. And since vSync uh, cannot, if you have vSync on, it can't display 40 frames per second, it went ahead and artificially dropped my frame rate down to around, four, around 30. So that's vSync. Uh, you can choose to dis disable it or enable it. It's up to you. I'm going to go ahead and keep it disabled for now because I'm not really worried about screen tearing or anything like that. And there's one more thing I want to show you in this tutorial. It's getting the OpenGL version so we can actually uh, uh, you know, check the version of, of, of OpenGL for people's computers. Uh, just in case, you know, you, you might give your game to your friend and it's not working. Uh, the first way to figure out why it's not working is to look at his OpenGL version because 9 times out of 10, the reason it's not working is because he has an old OpenGL version, at least if it's an OpenGL-related issue. So to do that, let's go ahead and uh, grab the OpenGL version and just print it out to the screen. So let's use a printf call. And I believe you have to do std printf, yes. You may not have to do this. And for the string, we're going to do, let's just say, um, we'll do star, 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 open GL version, like that. And let's do a percent %s in here, and then we'll do like a star, 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 asterisk. There we go. All right, so, and then the comma here, we're going to put a string. And the string we're going to get is, uh, we can make it, we can do a function call that's called GL get string. And then we can, in this uh, parentheses right here for GL get string, we're going to put in a OpenGL variable. Uh, and the one we are going to put in is GL version. So this GL version, uh, it's actually a macro. This is going to be set to your current version of OpenGL on whatever computer. 
And so this GL get string on GL version is going to convert that into a, like a string. It's going to tell you the version. It's going to be easy to understand. Then it'll just print it out to the screen. So let's say check the the open GL version. All right. So let's see. It, we may get a bunch of frame rate stuff that covers it up. Oh, there we go. So at the top, you can see uh, it says open GL version 4.2 build blah, blah, blah. So that is our OpenGL version. 4.2 means we have a, a, actually a very new version. Your version may be older or newer than that. Uh, remember, we are writing code for OpenGL 3.0 and higher. So if your OpenGL version is below 3.0, you probably didn't even make it this far into the tutorials anyways. Uh, if you run it on someone's computer and their OpenGL version is less than 3.0, they're not going to be able to run the game. But most computers these days should support OpenGL 3.0. If it doesn't uh, appear to have OpenGL 3.0, Try a graphics driver update. Look up your graphics drivers for your uh, graphics card. And if you update that, uh, oftentimes that will cause you to have a newer version of OpenGL that uh, is uh, 3.0 compatible. And we should put a new line here. There we go. All right, so thanks for sticking with me for this small little tutorial. In the next tutorial, we will do some more cool stuff. See you guys.